Okay, hello and welcome to 2017 Paper 2, uh, Leave Start Ordinary Level Maths, Question 5. So I should probably say this at the beginning of every video. Uh, it's worth pausing this if you, and giving it a go and then seeing where you get. So if you can pause any time and rewind, since it's a video. I'm going to keep going and just do a part A here. Now it's 15C, so it's worth a lot of marks. Okay. Um, in a survey, the IQ scores of 1,200 people were recorded. The mean score was 100 points and the standard deviation was 15 points. Assuming that IQ scores are normally distributed, it's important, uh, the data is shown in the diagram below. Part 1, fill in the missing numbers on the horizontal axis. Okay, as I say there in the hint for the thing, standard deviation is a measure of how much the data deviates from the mean. So we have our mean of 100, okay, the standard deviation is 15. So one standard deviation is 15 like lower than the mean or higher than the mean. If you think the mean of the normal distribution is right down the middle, that's why they say that, that you know, it's, it's normally distributed. And lots of times things are in the real world, you know, if this is a, a distribution of people's heights, for example, okay, you're always going to have people who are average height, okay, you have people who are very tall, people who are very short. And usually it's distributed evenly in short people versus tall people. Now, if you have your data, doesn't doesn't, you know, obey that, Okay, that's fine. That's the, way, that's the way the data is. And we have to account for that in the in different distributions. So in this case, okay, that would be 100. They're going to go to the answer. So your mean is 100. Okay. So one deviation below is 85. That makes sense. So it's 15 from 100 is 85. I've shown that sample calculation up here. Uh, once you've shown one sample calculation, you're fine. Um, then I show the standard deviation, uh, so the mean plus one standard deviation is 115, plus two is 130, plus three standard deviations is 145. Then take away one deviation, we said was 85, take away two deviations is 70, three deviations is 55. So with three standard deviations, you're 99% um, sure that the, the, there might be some outliers who have a lower IQ than that or a higher IQ than 145. They're the, you know, the 1% of the, of the data of the population. Um, this standard deviation here between 55 and 145 would cover, you know, the, va the, the majority of the population, the vast majority. Now, part two here, okay, so a person is chosen at random from those surveyed. Use the empirical rule to find the probability that this person has an IQ score of between 70 and 130. You see here, just I put in this infographic to kind of hope, help make sense of it. And you see there your mean, this is the normal distribution, your mean is down the middle. Now, if it's a perfectly normal distribution, your mean, mode, and median would be the exact same. But this question is only dealing with the mean. So if you have one standard deviation below and above, that represents 68% of the data. Uh, two standard deviations is 95% of the data. And three standard deviations is actually 99.7% of the data. Okay, so you see the, the numbers of deviations is on the bottom. Okay. And each of those jumps represents one standard deviation. So you know the empirical rule here, so I'm, to be honest, this is something that's very new in the course, or for the focus on it is, so I'm not the best on it. Um, most students, I think, don't feel very comfortable, but it's well worth, if you look at this question, going back and having a read of the beginning of the chapter in the book for this section, okay, and give some background. It might help you try to figure out and understand better what's going on. Hopefully I'll be able to help. So just look at the graph here, okay, I'm going to just uh, go through so the, the answer part A. The difference between 70 and 130 is two standard deviations. Just jump back a second. So the difference between 70 and the 130 is two standard deviations in the plus and two standard deviations in the, in the, the, the negative. Okay, so that's positive that way. If we go back here now, that represents 95% of the data. Okay, so you're looking at the empirical rule here saying that the probability of you being between the 70 to 130 is 0.95. Okay. Now to go percentage, that would be 0.95 by 100 would be 95%, which is what would be represented here. Okay. Hopefully that makes a bit more sense. Okay. But again, it is a very tricky area and there's a lot they can ask and confidence intervals and stuff. So it's well worth a view in that chapter. Use the empirical rule to find the approximate number of people surveyed with an IQ score between 85 and 115. Now, if I go back to our graph on the, the previous page, you'll see, look here. So, let me get rid of 
all the stuff on this page. So we're now focused on the 85 to 115. So that's one standard deviation in this direction, and one standard deviation back in this direction. Okay. So the empirical rule here, okay, actually we're looking for, find the approximate number of people. Um, looking at the graph in part A, the difference between 85 and 115 is one standard deviation, which in the normal distribution is 68% of the data. So it's that, that there. Okay, so we were given 1,200 back here, yeah, sorry. Uh, the survey of 1,200 people. So what's 68% of that? That's just the calculation there. 1,200 by 68 over 100. Put to the calculator equals 816. Now, there's part B here, okay. I remember when I was marking the exam this year, just direct my head. If it's, it's a probability, especially with advanced probability questions, can be very tricky. And making sure you understand the words. If I recall from this, this 24 pupils is important, okay. Now, a pupil will be genderless, as such, boy or girl. So, a class of 24 pupils is made up of 10 boys, 14 girls. Chemistry is studied by six of the boys and nine of the girls. Okay. So that's, uh, if a pupil is chosen at random from the class, find the probability that the pupil chosen is a boy or is a pupil who does not study chemistry. Now, a lot of things have been described here, but if it's a boy, or means we add in probability, the and rule means multiply, and a pupil who does not study chemistry. So we'll try to figure this out. We we'll see now. We have to look at two situations here. Okay, one is where you have two different sets of data, and they're completely separate. There's no overlap. Okay, now this scenario, there will be overlap because you could have a student who is a boy, and and, and studies chemistry. There's no reason they, that they can't. Okay, or a girl who do who studies chemistry. So we'll go to the answer because it's already typed out. So the probability of a boy or a pupil not studying chemistry, okay, they can give that here by the boy is 10, is 10 boys, so 10 out of 24, and that's added to, so or means add, okay, uh, the number of stu pupils studying chemistry is 14, okay, um, take away the nine girls, because the uh, girls, I suppose, can't be counted, and because it must be a boy or okay, and that's 14 take away 9 divided by the 24. Okay, now hopefully that made sense, but let's just go over it again. Um, because this is tricky. Um, so if we look at the key, sure that we understand the wording, the pupil could be boy or girl. So when they say pupil, as I said, they include boys and girls, but uh, we think about from this perspective, the boys have already been counted in this scenario. That's the 10 boys here, okay. So we're focused on the girls, now the, the, that's left, and we're focused on those girls who do not study chemistry. So it's 14 girls, 9 study chemistry, take them away, you're left with, um, was it 5? Okay, so 5 girls do not study chemistry. So you have your boys, 10 out of 24. Pupils not studying chemistry is 5 out of 24. And you end up then just uh, simplifying the fraction, if 15 over 24, which you go decimal, is 0.625. Now, again, that is very advanced probability. Um, you could argue here, you know, if you're dealing with a question like this, how do I get something out of an attempt? Do the attempts about two marks, or something partial here, whatever. It's fairly, you know, hopefully you'll be able to get in an exam full marks, okay? But even putting the 10 over 24, or the 14 over 24, um, should get you, you know, the, at least the, the you know, partial marks. Okay, so that's question B. Okay, thank you. It's the end of question five, and see you in question six.